Hey y'all! Welcome back to my channel. My name is Evelyn and I've challenged myself to read all of my unfinished Owl Crate books. <laughs> subscription boxes have become sort of a staple of the online book community over the past few years. There are so many of these subscription services out there, some that are themed around a specific fandom and book, some that give you a new book every month, some that give you a book plus a bunch of items. No matter what you're looking for, you could probably find a bookish subscription box that would give it to you. But today we're talking specifically about my subscription box of choice, which is Owlcrate. Every month Owlcrate sends you a themed book box that includes a mystery book signed by the author, often with an Owlcrate exclusive cover. And then you get a bunch of different goodies that are inspired by other books that fit the theme. I have been subscribed to Owlcrate since April of 2018, so for over a year now I have been receiving these boxes. If you've been around on my channel then you know that I usually post an Owlcrate unboxing every month. I love getting the box, opening it up, filming it, reacting to all of the things, seeing what the mystery book is, if I guessed it correctly, just getting really excited about it. I'm not so great at the follow-through though. So when I was trying to decide what things I wanted to do this summer, the last summer before I move out to go to college, I realized that I had nine of my Owlcrate books that I had yet to read. I hadn't even read Ace of Shades, which was the book from the April 2018 box. It was the very first Owlcrate book that I received and I hadn't read it. So at the end of May I decided that I was going to finish all of my Owlcrate books before I moved out. Between now and then I've received two more. I've read three. So I'm basically just one book closer to my goal than I was at the very beginning of the summer and now I have two weeks left before I move out. So this video is actually going to be part one of a three-part series where I basically break down my experience with Owlcrate and try to help you decide whether or not it is worth it for you to purchase a subscription. In this first video it's just going to be me struggling to finish all of these books in a vlog style format. In the second video I will be discussing every single Owlcrate book that I have received and read and what I rated them to basically see whether or not I enjoy a majority of the books that Owlcrate sends me. And then in the third and final video I will be doing a review of some of my favorite merch that Owlcrate has sent my way, basically showing you which things I actually use in my day-to-day -day life. So the idea is that by watching this series you will get a better idea of what happens with Owlcrate past the unboxing and it'll maybe give you an idea of whether or not purchasing an Owlcrate subscription is right for you. So without further ado, let's just hop right on into the reading vlog. Hey guys, Vlogging Evelyn here. I'm officially starting my personal Owlcrate readathon, my Owlathon, if you will. I actually just tried to start this yesterday and I was uh, live tweeting reading Ace of Shades which I actually really enjoyed and if you want to follow me on Twitter then you can see that but today we are starting with the next book uh, that I have not read and that is Mirage by Samea Dowd Mirage was featured in the September 2018 Alcrate box the theme was Masters of Disguise it's a Moroccan-inspired, I believe, sci-fi novel that I was very excited to pick up and then never did. And it's very small, so I really have no excuse. I've touched on this topic in a previous video, but this is actually one of the Owlcrate books that kind of focuses on, like, a girl getting taken to a palace against her own will. I've poked fun at Owlcrate before for being very into that theme, that plot line. But I don't think I've actually finished any of the books that have the plotline, so uh, I will be interested to see whether or not they're actually as similar as I think they are. But yeah, we're reading these in order of when I received them, so Mirage is number two. So, we're 
walking back onto the field for the first time. Uh, and we're not, we don't have to march. I've never had a march. Cassidy's never had. We did pregame. Oh, one, like two years. <laughs> it counts. Worst decision of my life. <laughs> did not do it in the year. Oh. That was not at all, that was a gay. No, I'm sorry about them. Oh, they so cute. I'm gonna cry. <laughs> Um, I'm here with my friend Cassidy and we just got dinner together and now we're eating gelato um, More chairs. and over in this direction there is a piano it's sitting out in front of a tea, shop. tea shop that we have downtown and as we were walking up there was this boy who really looked like he was dressed kind of like a frat guy so there's that. There's that. Um, but he was sitting at the piano playing Rhapsody in Blue from memory. While his family waited on While him. While his family waited on him. <laughs> so um, I think I just saw my soul. <laughs> oh. I'm such YA contemporary trash. I was like, Cassie, wouldn't that be the best me cue? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, he's playing my favorite song. I'm also getting gelato on my skirt, so I'm gonna go. Goodbye. Where's Darklin? Right now, I am on page 66 of 308. It's not going too hot. I had totally forgotten what the plot was actually about, so that was a little bit of a surprise. It's kind of like dark Princess and the Pauper. Like, Princess and the Pauper with kidnapping and also robots. So I have this playlist that I usually listen to while I'm reading or doing homework. It's called my Instrumental-ish playlist because they're mostly classical songs or songs from movie scores. Sometimes there's a little bit of like vocal as well but usually it's not in English um, so it's nothing that's like super distracting um, but as I'm reading Mirage I keep uh, finding myself every time a slow song comes on it's like anything from the Pride and Prejudice soundtrack um, I start to get really sleepy and I'm like this book is not keeping me awake um, which is a concern. <laughs> like, I think part of it is that the main character hasn't really been interacting with a lot of other characters. She doesn't really have relationships with any of the characters that are, like, any sort of positive relationship. Like, she's gone from her family, she has, like, a teacher, and then, of course, the princess. And the teacher and the princess are both, like, incredibly freaking mean to her. So all you just get for like several chapters is just her being like, oh, they're torturing me, <laughs> right? Which is like not the most enjoyable thing, but we've started to like kind of transition into the part where, oh, she's gonna have to imitate the princess and that's gonna be interesting. I will update you probably tomorrow uh, when I get a little further along in this. I did get distracted by uh, friends. <laughs> I actually saw in one of my friends' faces the moment that he realized he was actually going to miss me when I was gone. <laughs> that was really funny. When he realized that I was only going to be in town for another two weeks. Whereas a lot of people, because I live in a college town, um, don't move out of state. So I am an anomaly. <laughs> um, but yeah. Basically, I have two weeks to finish these eight books, but I also have two weeks to kind of say my goodbyes and make a few last good memories with my friends before I am gone for several months. I won't be coming home until Thanksgiving, so... <sighs> uh, yeah. So I will see you guys later. Hey guys! So it's day two 
of my unofficial owl song that I'm doing for myself. I am about halfway through Mirage, and prefacing that it is like four in the afternoon right now, I just haven't filmed at all today because I've been struggling a little bit. Um, I recently lost a portable hard drive. It was a uh, hand-me-down from my dad and it had been acting up for a little bit and then all of a sudden it just stopped working completely and that is where I kept all of my footage um, and I had a backup but it hadn't been updated recently and so I lost about four videos and six months worth of raw footage from January to June, like the entire month of June. Um, like actually the first clips that I have are from July 1st, <laughs> uh, because they were still on my SD card. So I still have the raw footage of all of my sit down videos I'd already filmed. But I was doing a montage video for the entire summer, and that is all gone now. All of my raw footage from both Disney trips is gone, and then um, just regular life things that I hadn't shared on the channel. So prom, graduation, um, etc. Um, everything I did with my friends the entire month of June. So... I have not been in the greatest mental state since then. I've been really struggling with wanting to create things because I feel just a weird sense of loss over um, the things I had been working on and the things I'd created. Um, this whole video is about trying to get stuff done before I move, uh, and I, a lot of those clips that I lost were little memories that I wanted to be able to have with me in Iowa, because I don't get to bring my friends with me. I wanted to at least have, you know, their voices and, you know, the, those memories that we had had shared that I had documented. My current footage, the footage that was on my SD card has been backed up. I have made sure that my system is working now. I have two hard drives. Um, brand new. <laughs> They're not gonna die out on me this time. But I was hoping that filming this video and reading these books would be a good distraction. For some reason today they've not been. Um, I feel like I'm having a really hard time getting into Mirage because I'm in kind of a crappy mood and I found myself being really reluctant to film new stuff even though I know that it, I'm not going to lose it the way I did th this last time. I'm still like afraid to film and I haven't brought myself to open up Final Cut since it happened. I'm about halfway through Mirage right now. And it's not a poorly written book. Like, it's a good book. The chapters are a little short. I'm just having trouble um, keeping track of everybody. Like, I've gotten the names mostly down at this point, but we keep getting introduced to new characters every few chapters. And we get a lot of, like, names of planets and names of cities and names of tribes and names of races of people and... It's a little bit confusing because I can't ever remember which tribe belongs to which city on which planet. I wasn't even sure if when she left home and went to the palace if she was still on the same planet or not. Also, like, she still hasn't really forged any relationships with the new characters except for kind of one with the princess, but that's, like, not going so hot. So, I don't know. I really, really want to like this because it, the prose is actually really nice. I'm just not feeling it yet. And I'm halfway through. Good afternoon. It is day three of the unofficial Owl-a-thon. And 
Uh, last night I couldn't sleep very well, so I ended up finishing Mirage around 1 in the morning. It ended up being pretty interesting. I never really got over my I don't know where things are <laughs> in relation to each other issue. But it was intriguing and the relationship that kind of started to grow between the main character and the princess she's for being forced to impersonate was really interesting. Um, the ending was a little bit unsatisfying, but I think it is going to have a sequel. I would hope. I'll look that up later. But all in all, I enjoyed it. I'm not, like, upset that I, like, I, they wasted an owl crate on it or anything like I was with Grace and Fury. I am currently sitting in my brand new chair. So one of the things, uh, that I ordered for my dorm room is a butterfly chair um, in my old classroom at Meridian. My teacher had three of these and I decided that I wanted somewhere comfortable to sit in my dorm that's not on my bed and these fold up so they store easily. So, ta-da! Brand new chair! <laughs> so I do have some editing to get done and uh, some packing to start uh, because I now have all of the things I need for my dorm room with the addition of this chair so I can start trying to figure out how it would all fit in our car. Fingers crossed I have enough room for all of the books that I want to bring. And then also I'm going to be starting my next Owl Crate book which is Shadow of the Fox by Julie Cogwa. It's uh, definitely thicker than Mirage, so hopefully it's a little more interesting at the beginning because I cannot take three days to read another book. <laughs> Shadow of the Fox was featured in the Lost in the Bookstore box from October of 2018. The main character is half Kitsune, so she's got fox spirit magic of some sort. And she was raised by these monks who some, at some point near the beginning of the novel, I'm assuming, are killed and they were in charge of protecting this important scroll and so it falls to her to be the one who's keeping it safe now. Um, that was great. <laughs> um, I, I cried a lot. There's like four more of these in my little purse thing. Um, it was... My only complaint is that the uh, guy playing Hamilton, uh, it's not that he couldn't rap, it's just... He wasn't very, he was soft. He was soft. He, he didn't, it wasn't as like staccato as. Okay, do you know where we're going from here? Lynn. But he sounded so much like yeah, Lynn yeah. when he was talking well, and he was ideally, singing. we need to get back and, on that street oh going my God. the other way. Unfortunately. All of the sisters, and Burr, and Washington. Uh, there's an island and you so can't amazing. get through. Uh, okay. Starting route to home. I've lost you again. Okay, but um. Right that was so good. Street. That was so good. That was one of the best Did you get shows there? I've ever seen. Yep. Yeah. Just all around. Hello! We are back home for a short bit before we head out to dinner and I just wanted to update you on my reading. So I am actually really enjoying Shadow of the Fox. It's really interesting. I really like the characters. Uh, the plot is intriguing, and I love all of the different, like, creatures and demons and, like, little mythological things that they've been running into that's, like, 
kind of up my alley fantasy wise and the magic system seems like straightforward and well thought out and all the rules are being set in place for us and it's just like really good. <laughs> I'm on page 153 out of 409 so not quite there. <laughs> That's all I got for now and I'll update you later once I have more thoughts. But right now my thoughts are, are positive thoughts. Also, um, Hamilton was so good. So good. I'm not going to be over that for a while. The actress who played Eliza in this touring company is actually from Oklahoma and she went to Oklahoma City University and so my girl <laughs> even though I'm not staying here I'm moving in two weeks but I thought that was really cool she was performing her heart out on her home stage and I, yeah anyway let's go eat Hello, it's day... I've lost count. I'm starting to think that I'm actually incapable of vlogging in the morning. We're still reading Shadow of the Fox, but we are progressing quite nicely. The, the smaller portion is what I still have left to read. About 100 pages left to go. Good job, me. <laughs> and I think that if I actually like take the time, I could probably finish it today. I'm actually really upset that I didn't pick this book up sooner because I'm really enjoying it. It's a quest and it's mythology based so it's basically like young adult Percy Jackson with like diversity points <laughs> and um, I love all of the main characters. Their dynamic is so fun. Um, I would kind of describe it as if Zuko and Sokka from Avatar The Last Airbender had to take care of Rapunzel from Tangled. It's amusing, to say the least. But yes, this book does kind of remind me of um, Avatar The Last Airbender in terms of the world building, but then also it's got that quest feel from Percy Jackson, and I just... It's right up my alley and somebody should have told me sooner. Or more accurately, I should have listened to the people who told me sooner. <laughs> um, so yes, this is shaping up to be one of the best books Alcrate has sent me. And I'm really excited. And once I finish that, I get to start Girls of Paper and Fire. Or start over with Girls of Paper and Fire. Which was, out of all of these books, the one I was anticipating the most, and also the one I was most afraid of disliking, which is why I have yet to actually sit down and read the whole thing. So, fingers crossed that it's just as enjoyable as Shadow of the Fox currently is. Hello friends! I'm officially done with Shadow of the Fox, and oh my goodness that ending. I need the second book. Now? Can I get it now? Can it be now? <sighs> anyway, I am going to a ukulele event with my mom. They're supposed to be Disney songs and they're all adults or small children so I'm the only one who like knows the a majority of the songs by heart <laughs> and so I've been recruited. I don't actually really play the ukulele that well but we're gonna try. Ukulele 
daily journey was a success, as always. Um, it's actually probably going to be my last SUA jam. SUA is the Stillwater Ukulele Association. And when I said bye to people, they were like, oh, goodbye. Like, they actually cared. And, I mean, like, not like they actually cared, but, like, they actually cared that I was leaving. And they wouldn't be seeing me for a while. And then they told me to come back and visit. And I was like, oh, thank you. Um, yes, so... That was heartwarming. And now, the moment we've all been waiting for, I get to restart Girls of Paper and Fire. <sighs> Should have grabbed my notes before I started talking. Oh, fuck, because I can't remember <laughs> everything. All my stats. I stepped in that box. Okay. Girls of Paper and Fire by Natasha McGann was featured in the Rise from the Ashes themed box from November of 2018. It's the story of a girl who is kidnapped by a demon prince or king. I probably should have looked in the dust jacket to figure that out. And uh, taken to his castle to become a consort of some sort and then falls in love with another girl who's there. So people raved about this book right around the time that it was released. So when I unboxed it from Alcrate, I was like, oh my gosh, yay, I have this book now. People are saying it's great. There's a female female romance and we are gonna read it and love it. And then the doubt crept in and I was like, what if I don't actually love this book? What am I gonna do? Like, it's sapphic fantasy, like that's what I'm trying to find and that's what I'm trying to write eventually. And I just got scared and so I didn't keep reading and now we're here. So we're about to face our fears and start Girls of Paper and Fire. I'm calling myself out here. I have the book. I've read a little bit, maybe three pages. And now, I'm watching Disney character performer audition experience videos. I can't audition for months. Months! And I'm not gonna audition this year. So... The amount of procrastination involved in this process. I don't know why I'm so afraid of reading this book. Hello! It is I, Editing Evelyn, <laughs> coming to you from my dorm room. It's a secret though, you can't you can't look at it. I ran into a little issue, so this vlog is way too long. I don't know what I expected from trying to do a video that spanned two weeks, uh, but it was an hour's worth of footage once I had it roughed out. I hadn't, I just hadn't added graphics yet, and it was an hour. So you're getting four videos in this series, two vlogs, plus a video where I talk about all of the items that I use for my upgrade boxes and then an as yet to be filmed video where I review all of the books. <laughs> so yeah, uh, tune in next week for more of me struggling to finish an insane number of books in not enough days, but also too many days for one vlog. If you want to see that video and more, remember to subscribe to my channel. Leave a thumbs up because uh, dedication, am I right? With that being said, my name is Evelyn. I make new videos every magical Monday and I'll see you real soon. Bye-bye.